Welcome to the HWBOT World Series 2016. Today is the final of the Asia Qualifier. There is only one of the two golden tickets remaining to access the HWBOT World Championship at the end of this year. Let's go into the first match of today. We will have Azan against Raccoon. Azan will be the red team and Raccoon will be the blue team. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and I've been joined today by Ligo, the Overclocking Expert. You always say that. I don't know. Where, where did you get that one? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that because I overclocked it, I'm like an expert. But yeah, I managed to hold up on a number one from Belgium. So if that means anything <laughs> on this planet, we'll see. It will be really interesting to see what Raccoon can do because it's it's always like it, it's like challenging maybe one of your idols. Hazan has been in this business such a long time and, and everybody has seen his like his world records, his scores and yeah, it's always like a let's say an honor to 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 joining to be joining like such a big competitor uh, live on stage. We're going to draw the benchmark. So the guy with the white shirt is Peter Jan Plezier, aka Massman of HWBot.org, and he's running through the different 2D benchmarks. So we have 12 in total. He will propose one to one of the competitors, and if they agree to run it. They will say, I will not they veto do. it. So Raccoon veto Cinebench 11.5 and Hazan vetoed memory frequency. Okay, so those two are eliminated already. So we'll we have be a double veto. Double veto? But it's going to be XTU full out. Okay. All right. So guys, if you haven't heard about XTU, XTU is an Intel streaming utility which can be downloaded free yes, so from we the are Intel. ready to go. From the Intel website. Ready to roll. So you see the 30 minute mark being set. Christian A will give the top. So we, we start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Good luck. So they're starting right now and you see immediately they're starting to cool down the system. So XTU, like I said, is Intel Extreme Tuning Utility developed uh, by Intel to test, let's say, quickly test your, your setup at home. And it's really dependent on processor speed and memory clocks. So the guys are, have a lot of work to do within these 30 minutes. So they have to find, let's say, or explore the maximum frequency of the CPU. And the CPU, in fact, is unknown to them because we kept the best four CPUs for today. So they really have to see uh, how high they can run it. They have, uh, each day they have been played by other Broadwell eCPUs and today it could be that maybe we see uh, a world record popping up again. We have no clue uh, how far they can push these CPUs. We quickly bin them and, and yeah, these should be like the four best that they will use today. So good luck to the competitors. Intel XTU is a, a benchmark that really stresses all the cores of your CPU. So all the 10 cores, 20 logical cores will be smashed in fact by this benchmark. It's really rough. So the first player already inside XTU and you will see it's like a really graphical layout. And the only thing you need to do at home is just press the run benchmark to button, sorry. What you will see will be... You guys at home can also use that benchmark yeah. uh, even for regular computer, even if you're just using air cooling or water cooling. This is available free of charge directly from the Intel website. I think it's download.intel.com. You can find it. Uh, you can find it also on hwbot.org and you go to the XTU zone and you have all the information and you even have some information about how to use it and what to look for in there. Indeed, and it is quite handy, in fact, because you have a temperature monitoring, you see how much your CPU is being stressed. And, and it's like we said, the vCore is very important. You get the output, so you can compare, let's say, the, the performance of your platform with all the, those those scores which are which are pop up. And it's really, really, really rough on the CPU. So what we have to look for today are uh, the monitoring and the score. So the current score is one of the top uh, running wheel at the moment. Uh, there is no limitation in the processor frequency, neither on the temperature. So what we will be focusing on is the score and uh, the frequency. So today, this is the, what we call a placeholder score, right? Uh, this is the score from ra the screen from Raccoon. He's doing a placeholder Raccoon at stock. 2192. Raccoon then have the first score. That's what it is. He, he, he does, and um, he, he does do a first score just for that. The main reason for doing this one score is to make sure you have a score on the leaderboard, 
Uh, today, there is no extra point if you just get into that, but you make sure that the system is working completely, that everything is fine before you go and push to, to the edge of stability. That's the thing. They push so hard the system that they need to be sure that everything is working before they even start pushing it even more. Indeed, and that's something where we saw yesterday during uh, the last let's say, show off. Bullshooter had so many issues, and in fact, it was related that some software was not properly installed. So, indeed, it's better maybe to run it first to see if everything is fine and then go indeed the exploration for the maximum frequencies. So, Raccoon at the moment is uh, leading 2192. In fact, he just ran the CPU at stock clocks to verify that everything was uh, running well, and now he's slowly and steadily increasing the CPU speed. So what we are calling the cooldown, the cooldown is the first part of this 30 minutes match. Uh, it's about five minutes. The reason is they have to be in positive temperature before the game start. This is one of the uh, very important requirements. They have to be above zero degrees uh, before uh, they start the game. The reason is that way uh, you cannot just prepare and have the uh, the CPU cooldown. This is part of the skills you need to master to be to to be a top overclocker and to have a top score. Indeed, and, and that's also a reason why they need to insulate these motherboards. So you really have to prepare the motherboards to be used on extreme cold. So what most do is like a liquid tape. Probably many of you use it at home on, on, on the car or to protect, let's say, the, the important surfaces of your car or bike against stones or whatever, like scratches. And we can also use them on, on hardware components. So there's like a really nice thin layer of, of rubber coating on it that really keeps it like, uh, let's say, protected from eventual condensation. It's, it's been a, like a really great venue here at the, the Computex World Trade Center because uh, we didn't have that much issues with, with condensation. Usually Taipei is really hot and humid. Like last year in the Maker Bar, they had this big block of ice on your, on your CPU pot and it just minus 190 degree, 90 degrees on the inside and the outside was just melting. I was like, how is this even possible? But that's, uh, yeah, Asia for you, I think. This is one of the biggest uh, issues with the overclocker, extreme overclocker in Taipei, Taiwan. It's so humid, right? It's so humid, so it gets condensation everywhere. And the condensation is actually the worst enemy of the extreme overclocker because once you have water on the board, you can have short circuit and all of that. You don't want that, right? You don't. You want to be sure that everything is dialed in and correctly. Yeah, and Hassan is going for a 4.8 gigahertz run, so uh, he will be beating the score of Raccoon normally pretty easy. So Raccoon also needs to crank up the speeds to to catch up. And this is really fun to to, to do in in these competi competitive uh, games, one v one, that you can spot directly what the other one is doing on on the other side of the bench table. So you really have an idea. Of, and, and the, the head admin in the middle, he will announce the score. Hazan, 2937. So you see 2937 now for Hazan. So taking a big leak over Raccoon. So Raccoon knows now, okay, uh, he's approximately at this frequency. So I need at least to be able to match them to be competitive with the guy to get the, let's say, the hot spot for the finals. There was a question on the live chat. What is these guys doing here standing with the microphone? <laughs> This is Christian there, the judge. He is announcing the official scores before they get on the scoreboard. Uh, first score from Azan, 2,937 points. And Hazan running again just to check if the system is stable. And you see like core frequency and processor cache frequency. Hazan, so 3104. 3104, pretty good score at this speed. So uh, he, already, he already have almost a thousand point advance on, on his opponent. This is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, but that's the thing with, with, with overclocking. And that's also the thing that you can, can do at home. If you just run it at stock and maybe just overclock it, like like we said, the 10 extra percent headroom that you usually have on, on, on most hardware, you will see the score really get, get, get like a, a very, very nice boost each time again. So here we go again. Raccoon is in the BIOS on the blue side of the screen, while our dear friend from Indonesia, Azan, on the red side, is pushing his CPU core voltage to 1.58 volt and trying to get the ring ratio a little bit higher. Indeed, Hazan is, I think, really, let's say, exploring the different values and that's also a thing that we say with overclocking you really have to take it step by step don't change like all the values that are available let's say in the bios that you saw on the right hand side just a, a few seconds before do it one step at a time take it slow take your time and finally you will be rewarded with a faster running setup 
as you see is almost at 1.58 volt this is a lot of volt for these new cpus uh, of course uh, i didn't saw anyone going higher than 1.8 volt uh, for this week uh, 1.8 is actually very very high voltage this is something you should never do and try at home to be that high on the system no, and then that's also the thing that you have to explore. This is a new, new architecture from, from Intel again. And we've been told that on air, you should limit yourself to 1.3, 1.4 volts max. And especially with, with the later value, you should be already be water cooling. This, this is not something that you can do on air. Hazan, 3111. 3111. So I think Hazan has got, the, let's say, this thing pretty maxed out already for these kind of clocks. So uh, I think that's a really, really solid score. Everybody has been benching the, the, the Intel XTU as well. That's crazy. We are eight minutes into the game. He's already almost stopping up what he can do with this system. So you have to dial in the last few settings to make sure maybe he can try. But that, that means he has 20 minutes to go. He has 20 minutes to still improve his score while his opponent Raccoon was in the BIOS trying to change and uh, do uh, I think it was aiming to go to 5 gigahertz to you know, do a decent score and build up from that one yeah that, that, that's the thing Hazan is now probably exploring the cache frequency and just, just see how high it can do 4300 megahertz is stable over there and he probably will be going ah, it's straight up to 5.0 now and probably he would just wait until he got the right temperature I think the best temperature we got these CPUs running at is, was like minus 100-ish degrees Celsius with Skylake we could go out like we called full pot so we could just fill the pot with liquid nitrogen and, and cool it down up to minus 196 degrees celsius this is not required with this broadwall e cpus and hazan is just uh yeah try you can see that raccoon just uh was in the bios and is restarting so uh what are the overclocker using in hardware today so raccoon is using the astro x99 motherboard uh what is the one that uh Azad is using yeah Azad is using one of the latest msi i think x99 got like carbon edition so msi's latest high-end motherboard that they also released i think just a few weeks before computex in fact i already saw that at a local msi venue but yeah they're officially retail available now I saw a summary on Facebook about Computex this year. It was RGB, RGB, VR, RGB, RGB. So all mainboard manufacturers are really focusing on, on the gaming, gaming community, in fact. So their colors, LEDs, LEDs, uh, whatever, you name it, they got it. They got you covered, man. I haven't seen a VR headset with LEDs yet. Maybe that's for next year. I don't know. <laughs> I will just launch a product by next year just for that. Yeah. So here we are, Azan is recooling down his CPU and going to run the benchmark once again. We're going for the benchmark now, this time at 5 gigahertz, so we should be getting closer up to 3200 and even more points. So each time you increase the CPU speed, the score should go up, should go up, of course. If it's unstable, the score will be lower or maybe just even crashes. So we see the what Truth calls the magical blue screen of death. And you, if you see it, ho people at home, you will hear it as well. You will hear it. Really, you will hear it. So 31.11 for Hazan. Raccoon still trailing 21.92. Really uh, having a hard time to get inside the operating system again at a higher speed than, than what he was before. So he needs to find the good value to get it dialed in. Hazan, 32.19. Very nice improvement of the score, almost 110 points improvement on his previous score. This is great by Hazan, he's displaying his skills here today. He top up his chip in about 10 minutes and now he's just building up on that. On the other side of the table, Raccoon is back into the BIOS trying to uh, dial in the memory voltage. Maybe he have he want to, to boot at a uh, very high frequency today. Uh, League of what would be the strategy that uh, an overclicker can you know, uh, use for this kind of uh, versus competition? Well, the, 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 you always ask about the tactics, but the thing is, it has to be stable first. You have to get into the OS and afterwards you can dial in. And Raccoon is like changing a lot of settings at the same time. And, and we have been seeing this in, in the past as well, that some motherboards don't like that you change like everything like by loading a profile, usually like with, with MS, especially with MSI, you had to take like two or three profiles to get it done. Load profile one, boot at that high memory frequency, then slowly dial in the memory timings and just continue like that. If you change too much at the same moment, it could be that motherboard gets like, maybe call it a little bit confused, I don't know, that it cannot train everything and, and it just doesn't post properly. This is the crazy things. There's so many settings that the guys can actually influence on and 
they have to know which one it is, right? They have to know which is the right one for them, uh, which is the right one they can in, uh, in in change. And if you change one settings and then you start again the system, try to bench and it doesn't work anymore, you need to know which settings is causing that. Indeed, and that's also why I say if you guys try this at home, probably you will not go into the, the, the memory timings that much as these guys will be doing. But just take it slowly, take it step by step, small increments, watch everything. There's always like this, this golden triangle, in fact, between processor speed, voltage and temperature output. You always have to check these three values. And that's why the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility is like really really good software because you see everything displayed when you are running the bench. You don't need like no other aftermarket software. Everything is there right in front of your nose. So let's see uh, the speed that Azan is running at. It was aiming at 5.1 gigahertz on this new Intel Core i7 6950X CPU, a 10, CP, a 10 core Broadwell CPU. So that 5 gigahertz, maybe we'll go to uh, the setting again. Hassan trying 51. 16 minutes. So we're almost halfway and Hassan is going for 5100 megahertz and it doesn't really change. Uh, trying maybe 49, maybe it was not stable enough or maybe, ah, okay, he's probably going to raise the B clock. So your processor speed, guys, at people at home is always, let's say, it's the final speed of your CPU, let's explain it like this, is always made up by two values. You have the multiplier, the CPU multiplier, multiplied by what we call B clock. So that's the 100 Raccoon, megahertz. 2990. Finally, finally, a good score from Raccoon is at 4.9 gigahertz. Now they still, uh, he still have some, uh, you know, some some room to catch up with Azan. But at least uh, his placeholder doesn't apply anymore. He was at 2100 point. He's now at 2900 point. Uh, he has still 210 points difference with his opponent. Let's hope he can get that two points in the next 10 or 15 minutes because in 15 minutes the match will be over and he will not have any chance to compete for maybe the one or last. Two remaining golden ticket for the SWBOT World Championship this year. Indeed, it is straight to moving up to 5 gigahertz now and just to see if, if it is enough to, to come closer to Hassan because 3219 is already like a pretty pretty solid score. I think most guys did around 3300-ish at 5.1 during the week. So Hassan is really on the roll. He's got really good efficiency, what we call. So good, good score for the clocks and, and I think Raccoon... Uh, yeah, I don't know if, if it will work out. It seemed his, his 4.9 score was a little bit too low to be, be maybe really competitive. Oh, 32-27! Oh, he's 32, back in the lead! His oh. Raccoon is now in the lead of this first semi-final here at the SWBOT World Series 2016. That was, oh, that was nice, like in two scores. Oh, and we got a blue screen from Azan! <laughs> So indeed, this is the, these guys are on, on the edge now at this moment. So uh, Raccoon running a really high processor cache frequency. Blue screen from Raccoon. So yeah, they're, they're really, really on the edge now of what their CPUs can do. They should be around 5,100 megahertz. And the core, yeah, the cache speed, maybe that's a little bit too low. That's something we found out during the week that we have to lower that second value and then usually we can he reach a slightly higher cpu speed but this is how fast it can go like we were halfway and, and hazan was like really leading comfortably in fact with with raku just catching up and he only needed like one run and, and now he's like leading by eight points and he's in the final at this moment so here we have uh, Azan was the first one to top a very high score and he improved that score, score uh, like uh, bench after bench. But Raccoon took about 10, 10, 15 minutes, uh, 10, 11 minutes to dial in into the settings, boot and then submit his benchmark. Uh, that would be very tight for them. This is super, super tight in terms of points difference here. Uh, just a few settings can change the score and balance the, uh, the outcome of this match. Yeah, and Hazan is trying to do the 5100 megahertz run again. So dialing in, probably cooling down, verify just with CPU ID if the processor is really picking up the speed. So you see 5100 megahertz, so 51 multiplier and about 100 B clock. Firing up the XTU. I always give this warning if it crashed before, so just click it away. Cool down, find the ideal temperature and just let it run.
So he's waiting till he gets the, like the proper temperature readout at his fluke, so his temperature monitoring meter, and he's running. 5,100 megahertz now. So this is so close to the edge that 1.5780 volts, 5.1 gigahertz. Uh, his processor cache frequency is at 4.3 gigahertz. This is a 10 core CPU, one of the latest Intel Core i7-6950X. This is the first week they have been overclocked under extreme, uh, extreme cooling here. These CPU are beasts of performances and this is so close to the edge now, like the performance you can see today on the screen. Blue screen! The performance you can see on the on their on their system is actually something you can't even reach if you just buy the CPU because the, they get the best CPU they can get on the market and they push it to the maximum they can. Yeah, for the people at home, you see Hasana is using like a gas torch. So the issue is with these CPUs, in fact, is if, if you get too cold, it could crash. And of course, if it also crashes, if you still have pour down like some LN2 in, in what we call the container which is on top of the CPU it still continues to cool down and at a certain temperature these setups just don't boot anymore so probably they, they boot around minus 1 minus 80 degrees Celsius sorry or if you're really really lucky you can even cool it down up to minus 100 degrees and it still pops up each time you press the power button but Hazan now just warmed up probably to minus 70 ish cool down again let's get the system to bow to post again get it to the operating system and hopefully he can nail the 5100 run to maybe give us a small small lead over raccoon this is crazy to see Hazan going that hard on the system he he is a very um, focused overclocker. He is usually dialing in to uh, some of the settings. Uh, he knows how to use the MSI motherboard. I know it's uh, maybe not his uh, favorite brand of choice, but he knows how to do it, right? He knows how to dial in in the settings to go and push the CPU to the maximum. Yeah, well, let's say that it's, it's the same as with gaming. With gaming, you also have like these controls and, and, and if you do like first person shooters and or whatever, these strategy games, Usually the commands that you can use are, are, are pretty similar. You only need to adapt to, let's say, the, the map structure and, and, and how the guns or whatever works. And it's the same for overclocking. The, the basic principle is there. You just need to find your way through the BIOS because this is the hard part. Usually all vendors call, call let's say, the voltages. They give them like a, their own specific name. And sometimes you have to wade through like a Google or whatever to find the exact terminology of, of the setting that you're adjusting. And we are 10 minutes left into this game, the first semi-final here at the SWBot World Series 2016. We are seeing Asan against Raccoon. The two overclockers are head to head. Raccoon took a little bit more than 10 minutes to actually get a good score to compete with Asan. Actually, Raccoon just submitted three score by now, as Asan, I think, submitted three or four score as well. Uh, this is a different strategy for both of the overclockers to, um, to reach the top score here on XT. You, they have to reach the highest possible score for this benchmark and the winner will access the grand final to compete for one of the last two remaining tickets of the golden uh, the golden ticket for the SWBot World Championship. Indeed, and Azana still trying to pull off the 5100 megahertz CPU speed run with the 4300 megahertz on cache and maybe it's the latter value that, that is stopping him from completing a run. So he needs to find, let's say, the ideal voltage temperature combination to get like a full run. Luckily on these Intel CPUs, it doesn't take that long. If you do this on a dual core like we did last year, you're like looking at the screen for a few minutes before you get a score output. So here we go, we can see the screen of Azan is at 100 reference clock. Uh, so that's the reference clock that is based uh, for, for the system is at 1.58 volt for the core voltage, 4.3 gigahertz for the processor cache ratio or oh, the benchmark has crashed. Let's wait for the blue screen. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get one in the blue screen. <laughs> Yeah, he's still he's he's, uh, he's comfortable with it. He has been he's been used to it now. He has how long do you know Hassan already in all these competitions, Truffman? It's been yeah, almost ten years now. Almost ten years, you see. So when these guys know as well, they have to yeah, they have to max out the system. Uh, he's trailing by just a mere eight points, which is nothing. If he can pull off like a fifty five thousand one hundred megahertz run, maybe a little bit lower cash, it could be enough to beat Raccoon. But Raccoon set like a really, really, really strong score for the clocks. And he proven me wrong. I thought his efficiency was not that good, but apparently the, the second run was like, wow, really mind blowing for the for them speed. So yeah. And this these are usually very, very tight battles. We we know what the CPUs can do because we pre bend them. But yeah, they have to find that little extra tweaking or tuning to do in the BIOS and to get it done.
to Azan trying maybe a different approach now. Going a little bit lower on the ring ratio and just trying five bigger. <laughs> screen for raccoon for raccoon and you can see Adam is always smiling every time I yell blue screen this is one of the funny stuff we can do here while while doing overclocking you know you you can see these blue screen they are so close to the edge that's funny because people are usually pissed off when they see a blue screen but for us it's the funniest part of it yeah I think there's maybe something wrong with us that we enjoy somebody failing on stage but indeed it, it, it's something that they have to, to to be able to cope with when overclocking TV is doing the, the streaming that there will be some extra pressure from one of the commentators and there's seven minutes left in this first semi-final of the HWBOT World Series 2016 here in Asia don't forget, guys, you can win one of the Zadak 511 SSD by typing the command raffle in the chat with the name of your favorite overclocker today. Is this Azan or Raccoon? Yeah, and it's like we said, it doesn't need to be the winner of this 1v1. So we're just pick your favorite. Just make sure the spelling is right and hopefully you will win this 250 gig SSD. So Azan running again. Got a little bit lower clock now, 5050 megahertz, and the processor cache frequency also a little bit lower than the 4300 he did before. And hopefully this run will complete. It's already a little bit further on than before. Usually crashed halfway, so he's almost like three fourths done. Is at 5.05 gigahertz. This, if this score finished to the end, it should normally actually get a little bit higher score. The only difference is oh, oh, exactly same the score. same match. This is incredible, man. Yeah, this is how tight these competitions can be and, and now it's just a matter of running, rerunning, maybe upping the B clock so the reference clock frequency a little bit more so you can run maybe 5060, 5070, the setup still remains stable just to get that extra point. Normally we have noticed that during the, the second or third run that you run XTU that you get like a little bit of more performance so maybe this will be the one. That's what he did. It just it just pressed rerun straight away because he knew it passed at least once. Let's see the new score. Oh, exactly again. the same Same one. again. <gasps> yeah. And we have only five minutes left in this first semi-final to decide who from Azan and Raccoon will access to the final, and they have exactly the same score. This is this is insane, man. This is insane. They're so close to the they are so close to the edge, that, and they managed to. Man, this is tight. This is super tight as a benchmark. Yeah, for you guys at home, normally if they launch the benchmark just in the final second, so just before time it's over, we will allow to complete the run and, and watch. Maybe that's something we will experience today, that uh, the score will be done when the official time, let's say, is called over. So he has to run, rerun, and maybe get that 3,228 to get into the final. So I guess that Azan will now just go back to the settings, increase the beat. Oh, he's Ooh, trying the ring ratio at 4.3. Yeah, I think that this might be stretching it, but he could prove me wrong. Raccoon already proved me wrong today, so maybe uh, it's time to find like another commentator, more another extreme expert in, in the business. If this one runs, indeed, it was like a CPU speed, which was like maxed. Otherwise, it might be the ring ratio if it crashes now. We will find out soon. But the benchmark is running is at 5.05 gigahertz and it just changed the difference from the ben um, the run before he uh, increased by one his ratio for the processor cache frequency so he's running at 4.34 and let's see this the new score coming this will be more than 30 to 27. yeah this, this should be better normally <laughs> you were oh, 51. Awesome man, 30, almost 35 more points in this uh, in this new score. He's taking the lead. There is only three minutes and 30 seconds left for Raccoon to dis to no to catch up with that score and do a best one. Indeed, uh, I think Raccoon was also topping around 5,000 megahertz. So uh, processes are really, really, really tight. So they really need to exploit other values now. And the thing that Hazan is doing now by changing the reference clock, it will also increase a little bit the memory speed because it, they are linked. So he gets a little bit more memory speed than with a 100 reference clock frequency. And yeah, it's boosting his score quite a lot. So he's now in the lead. Might not be comfortable, but at least he's in the lead again. New score coming. Not That's better not than his previous score, so let's uh, let's see. Maybe you want to, you uh, know, just tune in and just go back to the BIOS, change some of the settings to make sure that everything will be alright for him uh, in the next run. 
Yeah, and I don't know if Hazan will, will, will still go into the bias. There's only like two minutes 40 left and, and even shutting down the windows, maybe changing a value in the bias that the setup will not boot at that moment. I, I don't know if he will take that risk. Probably he will just stay here and, and let it run, rerun, maybe change the reference clock frequency a little bit more just to get it done. But I think he's like settling with the 5050 megahertz on the CPU and maybe try, still tries to push the, the cache frequency a little bit. So here we go, there is 2 minutes and 10 seconds left. Raccoon is in the system, he's adjusting the last bit of uh, of the settings and you have to run. Uh, the chance for him here, he have to run the benchmark. Uh, that's going to be last about like 20-25 seconds and then if it crash, you have to restart everything and maybe lose some precious times. This is crazy, the guys are head to head now, but Azan is uh, just taking a front of the lead. Oh, sadly, the screen of Raccoon crashed. Indeed, and, and, and if, usually if these setups crash, there's like a hard lock. You really have to power down, so press the power button or, or flip up the, the, the button on the, on the power supply on the back. I just let it allow to pose, but this will yeah, be some precious seconds that he will lose. So, uh, it's like we said, if he launches the benchmark in the final seconds, he's good to go. But he was really pushing it. I think 4,400 cash is one of the highest that we have seen. So maybe that value was a little bit over the top to get it done. Razan well, adjusting the reference clock again, set from 101 going to 101.5 and it's like this only raised let's say the total CPU speed by 25 megahertz. So it's 5075 now and maybe he will pull off the final run so he can secure his little seat for the finals. Actually, that would be interesting because there's only one minute left in this first semi-final of the HWBOT World Series 2016. This is tight and Azan is taking the lead right now. Let's let's see if Raccoon have the time to boot again in the next 40 seconds and run the benchmark. Indeed, so Azan has a CPU speed of 5,100 megahertz was a little bit too high so now it's just still below and, and that's why we call this extreme overclock and they're really like maxing out the cpu till the final megahertz yeah he beat the score again 3259 hazan 3259 30 proving his score once again this is taking the lead raccoon says no no i'm over no. there's only 10 seconds left don't think you don't think that he can do it the goal is as long as the benchmark is started before the end it will be valid yeah, but it's, it's like I said, he, it takes a, a time to get... Time's up. So let's wait for the last score of Azan. This is the last score that will be uh, uh, available here for this first game. 3260. 3259. So in, indeed for the guys at home, you see this benchmark is like putting out some, some, some decent scores and they're like stable scores. It's not like they're fluctuating all the time. So... Yeah, pretty, pretty good show by Hassan because Raccoon really put the pressure at a certain moment on him by... Woohoo! Congratulations Congrats, to Hassan. Hassan is accessing the final to defend his title to get one of the golden tickets for the HWBOT World Championship. Very good match here between Hassan and Raccoon. Legal, what did you that what did you think about this, uh, this match here? Yeah, Hazan was like uh, leading comfortably and then Raccoon just came back out of nowhere. And that's something that we have seen like in all these games, like uh, somebody places a placeholder and then tries to, 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 to step up and, and the other guy just pops in and just passes you like like <laughs> like in a flash. And then you have to catch up again. And that puts like so much stress on, on both competitors. Yeah, re really good show by Hazan. 32.59, really, really, really solid score because usually this, this benchmark prefers 32-bit operating systems. Probably the people at home will start to laugh. 32-bit, are you serious, man? And that's something that overclockers always have to exploit indeed. It's like, what benchmark is suited to which OS? A lot of a lot, that, that's the thing. There's so many settings that can be influenced in uh, in, uh, in in the overclocking for the scores. Uh, so what will happen now is the two overclockers that we saw today, Azan and Raccoon, will pack up all the hardware back to their uh, to their spot where they prepare, uh, clean up the the complete desk, and the next wave of overclockers will be able to access uh, this stage. The next game is in about 30 minutes. Uh, we will might be starting it a little bit earlier due to the fact that we want to catch up with the time. So thank you guys for sticking in here around let's do the raffle let's uh, find out who won one of this awesome zadak 511 ssd can you do the uh, end model my friend so here we have a new box 
So it's not so. really like a really flashy looking product, but it's what's most important is what's inside, of course. 250 gigabytes of, uh, yeah, SSD power, man. Solid state drive. Awesome for your gaming loading times to reduce them like drastically. If you're still running like a hard disk platter, these things are, I think, maybe one of the better performance upgrades for any PCs. People that don't have like a solid state drive at home or M.2 or NVMe, these things are to go for to boost the performance of your PC. So you close the raffle, Truthman. The raffle is closed. Let's draw one. So uh, we say that you have to type the name of who you were cheering for today. Was that Azan or a Raccoon? Uh, I made a mistake. I made a typo in the name. So we'll uh, accept any of the names. So guys, it's either pronounced Azan or Raccoon. So let's see uh, who can we draw. And the first one in is Nen AWP209. And you are the winner of this uh, awesome SSD. Uh, your uh, answer was Raccoon with no mistake, actually. So so that was uh, perfect for you. Congratulations uh, to you. And this one will be yours. Uh, we will send you a PM, but actually, do you want it signed by some of the overclockers today, either Raccoon and Azan? That would be actually a nice, uh, nice things to do. So let us know if you want it to be signed, and we'll be uh, arranging that here. That's going to be a special limited edition, especially for you. So congratulations, NWP, NAWP 2009. Uh, guys, we'll take a short break before the next match. The next match is going to be in about 10, 15 minutes for the pre-game show, explaining who are the overclockers. And it will be featuring the top two best overclockers in the world, Dan Cobb versus Extreme Addict. So stay tuned, and we'll catch with you guys soon.